Hello, welcome to Computer Science 340. My name is Dr. Ian Van Leeson, and I'm going to be the instructor for this class. I normally go by Ian with my students, so if you're chatting with me or emailing me, you can just address me as Ian, that's, that's good. So the purpose of this video is to go over the syllabus for Computer Science 340 so that you know how the class is going to work, what you can expect from me, what my expectations are for you, and how the, the course is going to work in an online format, how you're going to get the material and all of that kind of thing. So even though this class is online this semester, it would be nice to maybe get to know you all at least a little bit. And so to that end, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. I've been teaching here at UMW for eight years. This is my ninth year. I teach a pretty wide variety of classes, but 340 is actually one of my favorites to teach, so hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll like it too. I live with my wife, who is actually also a UMW professor. She teaches in the geography department, so maybe a couple of you have had her for class before. We have two kids, uh, two boys ages eight and six, uh, and uh, for fun, I like to play music. Uh, I play guitar. As you can see, we're in my uh, home office, which has been built inside of our basement music room. So whether I'm working in my home office here or my office in Farmer Hall, I'm always sort of working in the basement, I guess. Um, my other hobbies include uh, running and uh, playing Ultimate Frisbee, which is uh, on hold because of the uh, pandemic, of course. Uh, I also enjoy baking, which is not on hold. I've been doing a lot of that, and cooking, and uh, things like that, uh, and also reading. So that's a little bit about me. Now, like I said, the main point of this video is to introduce myself to you and also to go over the syllabus so that you understand how the class is going to work. So now let's take a look at the syllabus, and I'll go through it in, in some detail. The syllabus for this class is available on my website for this course, which is ianfinlayson.net slash class slash cpsc340. There's a link to this on the Canvas site for this class, and you might want to go ahead and bookmark it. Right now we have a link to the syllabus, which I'm going to be talking about in a second, as well as the first week's worth of material and the first assignment. Of course, as we go throughout the semester, more will be posted. I'm going to be sending you an email every Monday with the link to the, the new material and to talk about what we're going to be doing that week in the class. Here's the syllabus for this class, which is the page that you're on right now, probably watching this video. So if you scroll down, you can see all of the, all of the text that I'm going to be going over. Of course, uh, my name is Ian Finlayson, as I've already said. Here's my email address, ifinlay at umw.edu. My office hours for this semester are Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 2.30 or by appointment, but I'm not actually going to be in my office, Farmer B18, during this time. I'm working from home uh, during the pandemic. And so instead you will, if you want to visit my office hours, you should send me an email and we'll set up a Zoom meeting. This is just time that I have sort of set aside, guaranteed for meeting with students. And also during that time, I'll be answering emails. So if you just have a quick question, you can send me an email. And if you send it during those times, you can be pretty sure that I'm gonna get back to you pretty quickly during that. I'm pretty flexible though. So if those times don't work for you and you want to set up a Zoom meeting for some other day or time, that's perfectly fine too. So just let me know if those don't work for you. Those are just sort of my official on the book office hours for this semester. Next is the course description. This is what you can find in the UMW catalog. It says a continued study of data modeling and incorporation of abstract data types, including list, link lists, stacks, queues, heaps, trees, and graphs. We're also going to talk about sorting and searching techniques. Uh, it provides experience in the use of algorithm analysis and provides continued study of program design, coding, debugging, testing, and documentation in an object-oriented high-level language. So as I said, week one's material has already been posted, so you can go ahead and look at that now. And most of what that is about is about explaining what all of this means to you. So it'll talk about what algorithm analysis is and what data structures are, but essentially, what the goal of this class is, is to take you from where you are now as a programmer after taking 220 and 240 and sort of level up your programming skills. So you'll be doing labs and programming assignments that let you practice your Java programming. This class, like 220 and 240 here at UMW, is in Java. So you're going to keep working on program design, coding, debugging, all that stuff. 
But specifically, you're going to be looking at data structures, which essentially is how do you organize the information that your program's got to keep track of in the best way possible to make the program easy and natural to write and also so that it runs quickly. Hopefully 220 and 240 gave you good experience and made you feel more confident with each class that you know what you're doing as a programmer, and hopefully this class will as well. Down here are the course goals and objectives. Basically, we're going to look at lots of different data structures. Down below, we have the grading policy. So half of your points for this semester are going to come from the programming projects. The first of which, as I mentioned, has already been posted, so you can take a look at that right away. 30% is going to come from lab exercises. The course will be divided up into multiple of these modules. And so the first one is already posted here. And each one is going to have some number of sort of like lessons that you'll, you'll go through. And so these each have a video and some notes associated with it, the A, B, and C here. Then each module will also have a lab. And so there will be 13 or 14 of these labs. And together, those are going to make up 30% of your grade. Then there will be a midterm exam online through Canvas, which is worth 10% of your grade, and also a final exam through Canvas, which is worth 10% of your grade as well. Your grade uh, grading scale is, is here. Uh, I don't round up grades, so if you have like a 93.9, it's still an A minus, uh, and, and so on and so forth. For the late penalty, there's 10% off per day that assignments are not turned in on time. So if something is due Friday and you get it to me Monday, then it would be three days late, and so it would be 30% off of the top of that. Also, I don't give extra credit opportunities to individual students. That really wouldn't be fair at all. But there are some extra credit opportunities throughout the semester that are available to everybody. One thing I should note is that this class is focused on building data structures and writing algorithms ourselves. So because of that, some assignments, it would not really be in the spirit of the assignment to use the built-in one that comes with Java. So for instance, in one of the assignments, you're going to have to work with a hash table implementation that we're kind of like building ourselves and you'll have to add parts to it. And so just using the built-in Java hash table would be cheating for that assignment. And so for the assignments, you will have to sort of follow the instructions. If I say that you're supposed to be designing something yourself, you can't just grab it from the standard library. If you have any questions about that, you know, whether something is okay to use or not, just let me know. Lastly, in this section, the university gives me the opportunity to give you feedback halfway through the semester. So if you have less than the 65%, after the midterm break for the semester, then you'll get a U for your mid-semester grade. And if that happens to you, that doesn't mean that, you know, like all hope is lost and you're going to fail. It just means that you need to think about how you're doing in the class and try to come up with a, a way, a way to do better. And if that does happen to you, please feel free to reach out to me and talk about, you know, what is going wrong with your grade and, and how, how you can be more successful in the class. All right, so as I mentioned, or as you know, of course, this class is an online asynchronous class, which means that we're not going to have any fixed meeting times. You are responsible for completing the material and turning in assignments when you can before the due dates, but there's no fixed times to do anything. The class material is divided into multiple modules, and there will be one module for every week. So the first week's module is up here already, entitled Course Introduction. And next week, on the second week of classes, there will be a new module on another topic. Each of these, like I mentioned before, has some number of lessons. And so there's three with this first module and then one lab. The modules will be given to you on Monday and the lab is going to be due on Friday. Also with this class, there's some number of assignments and those are due at different points throughout the semester not necessarily lining up with the modules. So when the modules and assignments are posted, I will send you emails letting you know, and I'll do that to keep you up to date on when the due dates for those assignments are. You can also see those uh, assignment due dates in Canvas. Even though the assignment descriptions are not in Canvas, I put in the due dates on Canvas so that you should see them on your like to-do list or, or whatever Canvas gives you so that you can check there to see when things are due as well. As I mentioned, office hours will be virtual this semester. If you want to set up a meeting, please just let me know a little bit ahead of time. And I officially have my hours, as I said, Tuesday from 1 to 2.30, but I am flexible and can do it at different times too. The honor policy for this class 
is that for labs, the collaboration is okay, probably because this is online and asynchronous, you know, and we're not actually in a computer lab together, it would be harder to do this. But if you do have friends taking the class, you can talk with them about how to do the labs. That's perfectly okay. Uh, the goal of the labs is to make sure you understand what is happening and how the course material is being applied. But for projects, your work has to be your own. You can talk about the project with other people, but all of your code has to be your own. It would be an honor code violation to copy code from someone else, either in the class or not in the class, or have someone else write code for you, or to copy a bunch of code from the internet is not okay either. So there's a sort of gray area here because you can copy small amounts of code from the internet, that's, that's okay, but you can't copy a large amount. And so hopefully this sort of distinction makes sense, but let's say you're, we're doing an assignment in Java and you need to convert from a string to an integer, like you have the string 37, but you need to actually make it an int data type. And you Google, you know, Java string to integer, and you see two lines on Stack Overflow. It's perfectly okay to copy those lines into your code, you know, nobody remembers all of the little fiddly things about how to do stuff like that. So Googling and finding answers for like little parts and pieces like that is perfectly normal. And you don't, that's not an honor code violation. But if you are asked to write a spell checker in Java, which is I think going to be one of our assignments later on in the semester, and you Google, you know, Java spell checker, and you copy 200 lines of code from someone's blog and turn that in as your assignment. That is obviously, hopefully, obviously, anyway, a different thing, right? That's copying the large portion of the assignment and turning it in as your own work. That's not allowed, but finding little pieces to accomplish the bigger overall task that you're trying to work on is okay. So hopefully that distinction, I hope, makes sense to you all. But if you have any questions on, on gray area, if you're not sure if something is an honor code violation, just let me know ahead of time and, and you know I'll tell you if I think it's okay or not. And then lastly, for exams, you shouldn't copy your exam answers off of another student uh, or copy your answers wholesale off the web. For the exams, they're actually open internet, and so you, you can Google things but you should turn your answers in, in your own words. You, sh you shouldn't just copy, you know, text off of, off of another web page anywhere and turn it in as your own work. All right, next is the disability statement. So if you need accommodations through the Office of Disabilities, then you can contact them and uh, talk with me as well about the accommodations that you need and we'll get that taken care of. Even if you aren't necessarily registered for the, with the Office of Disability Resources, if there's anything about the class and, and how it's being run that uh, could be changed to make it easier for you to succeed, please let me know just in general. I want you all to succeed and do well in this class. And I've tried to set it up in a way that I think most people will be able to, but if there's anything that, that could be tweaked about, about the course in any way to help you succeed, please just let me know. I'd, I'd like to be able to help you in that way. Next is the Title IX statement, which is about sexual and gender-based harassment. So if you experience sexual or gender-based harassment uh, at all, you should talk to the Title IX office. And the important thing in this section is that while you can talk to me, uh, understand that as a responsibility, uh, a responsible employee of the university, I'm bound to report anything that I hear that falls under that, that heading of sexual or gender-based harassment to the Title IX coordinator. I am, can't be a confidential person for you to talk to about anything like this. I'm like legally required to, to share what you tell me that, that falls under that heading. So there are people at the university who can talk with you confidentially, but I'm not one of them. And then lastly, on the syllabus here, we have the recording statement which doesn't make as much sense doing this online because I've already recorded stuff. But I guess if we have office hours and you're meeting with me over Zoom and you're recording it, that's okay with me, but just don't share it without permission. I can't think why you would want to, but, uh, but uh, just to go over the, the recording statement, you have to have permission to share any kind of recordings that you get from this class. All right, so that is all for the syllabus. All right, so thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions at all about the syllabus or any of the course policies or how the class is going to work, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. Um, even if you just want to you know, send me a message introducing yourself, um, that would be cool too. Like I said, I, it would be nice ideally to, to get to know you all a little bit, even though we are teaching online asynchronous. So if you have any uh, questions, please let me know. 
uh, or just want to say hi, please let me know too. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.